Hello everyone and welcome to the second lesson. In this lesson we are going to be talking about the types and categories of junctions. So what are the types of roadway crossings? So the first category is we have at grade junctions. At grade junctions and at grade means the level is similar. So one junction uh, in relation to everything they are at the same level. So then we have the grade separated junctions without ramps. So this can be like maybe there's a flyover or something. And the main reason for that is you find to allow the traffic, the through traffic to move with ease. And then finally we have what we call interchanges. Now these you've heard about them. They are junctions in simplicity. They are grade separated but they tend to be supported by ramps. Now what's functional area? This is very important because when we are designing a junction, our main consideration should be the functional area. How far should the junction span back? This is guided by a number of the design factors that we shall look at later in the class. But let's start by defining what a functional area is. You're going to find that the functional area includes two things. The first is it includes the interaction area. And if you are to carefully look at this, okay, so we have two things. This is the physical area. What you're looking at right now is the physical area, which in most cases some people call the interaction area. Then we have the area for the auxiliary lanes. This looks at how the lanes are approaching. So we have this. You find that you have this functional area. This is where people are making their right turns. They're doing all sorts of things. Then we have the area where we have the auxiliary lanes. So this is where cars are making decisions as they approach the junction. So when you are trying to work out design for a junction, for example, in this case, we are trying to establish where will the functional area end. You can see the functional area for this case, this arm, this arm is the longest. So the functional area for this arm is way longer than this arm. This is shorter compared to this. And there are various reasons. These are based on site conditions and a number of things. So once you understand the functional area, you understand how far back the junction will span. And you're going to find that, as I explained earlier, this includes the storage length, how many cars, the maneuver distance, and the decision distance. Now, when we look at the types of intersections, because we looked at the types of junctions, now it looks at the types of intersections. So one, as you always know, we have the first one, which is a three-leg intersection. So as you see in the image here, we have three legs. There's the four leg, which is four legs. Then we have the multi-leg, multitude of arms. So there are junctions which are more than four arms. And then finally, we have the roundabouts, which are a form of junction, but with circulation. So what are the different variations? And remember, these are variations. This normally you can find that because traffic is so high, you're going to have to kind of vary either the your forearm junction or that. And you can do this with channelization. Now, channelization is a technique that helps you separate traffic because traffic is high and you want to improve the safety of the junction. And you can do that by introducing islands. So what you're seeing here, islands, and in the junction that I'm showing you here, you can see it's channelized. Okay, and in the traffic course, we go further into this. Then the other issue is you flare. So what you're seeing here is the junctions are flared. As they approach, we have a taper ratio that allows the junction to widen, allowing for different turning movements. Then finally, we have the unchannelized. You don't do anything. You don't add any islands. You don't add any flares. And you find most of these, they're simplistic along a road. So traffic is coming from one direction and it can turn left and right. And traffic here can turn that and straight, the same with here. And you've not done anything like that. And this normally you assess using traffic to confirm this. But from the get-go, you could find that the junction has site issues and you have to attack this from the start. So now we are again showing the variation for this. So if you have a single lane approach, double lane approach, and flaring. And you can find this in the student course. You can find this in the data that I'm going to share with you. Now then we have many variations of the four-leg junction. We start with the standard, 
which is the single lane. You increase the number of lanes, okay? And then after that, you can channelize it. After that, you can have division islands, just islands, without you really, um, without you really channelizing it. And the highest form is you could channelize, you have islands and you have splitters, which we have in this case. Now, what's a multi-leg junction that you may have asked? So you find that the multi-leg junction is like any other junction, but you find that there are a number of things. So we have an intersection that's multi-legged. They are very close to each other. So where it was is that at this junction A, you had this arm, you had that arm, you had that arm, you had that arm, and then you had that arm. In this case, we had five arms that are approaching one junction. And now, as we talk about, you will find that there are ways how we can handle this junction. So, the current solution is to realign this junction and separate the two. So, we have a junction at A and a junction at B. It's the same case here. We have the four arms and we moved one of the arms, we moved the arm here. So what you understand from multi-leg junction is our goal is to try and reduce the arms, okay? Reduce the arms that you're working with. And there's always a minimum spacing they recommend for this. So you shall find that that's what determines your curvature. So you may ask why this road coming, why isn't the curvature the one in red? Why isn't the curvature the one in black? So there is a minimum distance that we have to adhere to, and that's what determines the radius for the junction. How do we treat junctions? What you're seeing here is we have option A and the original junction was going as shown in the dotted line. So it was something like in red. And how would we treat the junction? Our goal is to make sure the junctions always meet at right angles. Now there are many reasons as to why this. But one of the issues is side distance, the travel times for vehicles, there are many reasons as to why. And you shall find that if a junction is coming the way you're seeing in red, you can see all these. These are very angles that do not meet the standards. Okay? And all you have to do is you have to find ways of making sure it's the right angle. So you can come in red. You can do that. Again, you can come like this. Do that. So you create kind of a curvature. Or you can separate the two junctions. If the angles are really bad, you just separate the two junctions and say, you know what? I'm going to make sure I have my minimum spacing here and here, but I'm going to separate the two junctions. Now, what's the minimum angle? You shall find that normally it's recommended to have 75 degrees to 90 degrees. Where possible, always adhere to 90 degrees. But in case you are in situations where your junction might be a bit skewed, just ensure that's not less than 75 degrees. So if you find you're less than 75 degrees, then you're going to have to do all these junction, these junction treatments. Now, in the workbook, you are going to find over 10 junction exercises that you can do. The goal is, what do you consider? So before you start the junction exercise, I'm going to highlight to you what's very important. So first of all, we have something. First of all, we have something called a major rod, and something we call a minor rod. What's the distinction between a major rod and a minor rod? So a major rod could be the main line. So you could find that there's a main rod, and it's just the main line, and you could find this could be. A minor rod or it could be a rod of the main line okay so what would happen in that case so if you have one rod being a major rod and you find that the minor rod what's happening with the minor rod is the minor rod is coming something like this so what ends up happening is you are now going to realign the minor rod, okay? The minor rod is the one which loses. Now, there are cases whereby, let me give an example. 
we have this as the major rod and we also have this as a minor rod and also this. You can see that in this case this is okay and there's a challenge with this. Now one of the options as we mentioned is you could put this something along here and you do something like that to allow traffic to meet here. The other option is let these two meet. Okay, if you look in the exercise files there are a number of junction treatments and at the end you are going to see a quiz showing you actual life practical applications of this. It's very important that you do this exercise. It will help you how you can treat different junctions. So always understand what's a major road and what's a minor road. The minor road will always try and tune to the major road. Look in the exercise files. I've given over 10 to 20 examples showing you how I'll treat the different junctions highlighted in red. So the first case is you play around with it. Also, you try realigning the junctions and then check what I've done to confirm. And if you have any questions, don't forget to reach out. Thank you. For